of the long story at the heavy reader here. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional honor of the land on which the gathering is taking place, the Yugara people and Jagra people. Indonesia? Indonesia, yes, so many different people that, um, that point that out. <laughs> and one side were saints and the other side were dragons. <laughs> and in 2017, the current deputy mayor Council Robin Furmeister rang me out in beginning of September asking me where can I borrow a dragon costume with eight people doing the running around, you know, dancing with the dragon online and the product didn't arrive yet. So she was panicking. I said, give me five minutes. <laughs> so I ring out uh, friends called Melody Chang for War Arts and Multiculture and we gave her a dragon, borrow a dragon using Korea straight to St. George the following day. And I promised her at the time, I say, we'll give you a new eight people costume dragon, new one on the 30th of March, 2019. And we did deliver that. If you need a dragon. <laughs> so the same joke, 57 times. <laughs> and I, tell, I always say, you need to find a First Nations word that you can use that you can use back to your original country uh, and because that word is a special word for you because you're connected here now. That's right. Uh, and people, you can see people, some people wandering in, in their thong from rugby league called Dale Shearer uh, and he was a, you know, played rugby league for Queensland and Australia uh, and so we would sort of hang out together and do mischief as, you know, 12 year olds or 13 year olds I suppose. And uh, from Glenn. and also, how did you and Wayne put this book together? Yeah, well, any any influence from the uh, publisher called Dan Kelly? That's my publisher at the back, so I feel like I'm on on show here. Uh, but it, look, the crafting the book was different. Fiction is much easier to write. Yeah, you know, it's just. I, being a politician, I just steal from the people I meet. Uh, they always give me some good lines that I can work or steal or rework. Uh, with Wayne, it, it had to be true. It had to be the words that came out of his mouth or the other people that I interviewed. And um, weaving... I didn't know the narrative. Well, I, I knew, knew much of the story, but I didn't know the directions it was going to go. Uh, so it was just literally recording either Wayne live over the phone or in front of him. Uh, a lot of it was over the phone. He's a, um, a farm worker who often drives uh, cotton harvesters up and down or you know, does work where he can sort of let the machine go and so we'd often do, do recordings when he was doing that. Who come up with the idea? What is the inspiration? Well, when one of those trips to, oh, sorry, no, this is, this would have been 16 or 17. I remember going out to St. George. Uh, there was a, a, a diplomatic representative that wanted to see a bit of the real Australia, and I said, well, that's St. George. So took him out, and um, then uh, Robert Buck and a former mayor told the story of when we were out there, how back in the 70s when someone had the bright idea to clean up the St. George Cemetery. In front on the left hand side. Yeah. Facing north. Yeah, so it is. Oh, the reason why I say facing north is because the China is on the northern hemisphere. So when we design this memorial, we want the uh, Chinese feng shui master or the geomancer they had to face north. That is according to the principle of feng shui, yeah. because China is the northern hemisphere. Well, the so that made me think. Well, so those stories are gone. The, the grave marker is gone. I mean, you know, uh, what do they say that we die twice 
once when we die and then the second time when people stop saying our name and looking at the, the cemetery it made me think well we need to tell that story and hearing that long you know I know I've known him all my life but when you said well obviously it would be long it would be uh, you said that her name would have been a Chinese name so that anglicize you know so as so often happens people have anglicized an English, uh, a Chinese name and so I got the book and the memorial flowed from that and the sad thing is when we looked in the cemetery when we went to the council records for some names it had a Chinaman like they were, they were the words uh, for that grave so we Nothing we, else. we could not get every name uh, but it was a, a case of telling that story and I we always know you know, you know, it's a wonderful thing. At that time is 2000, it's roughly 2000. This time, the tourists in St. George, we have uh, a breakfast on the 16th of July and ask the same question, what's the population now? The guys told us that in 2021 census is run about 3000. I said, whoa, that is a jump of a thousand from 2017 to 2023. Jobs people come to see, you know, water is gold in that in that community. So, All right. Yeah, and, and uh, those droughts can really knock country towns around. For, for your information, there's only one Chinese restaurant there. And when we're growing out there? Yeah, the presence of, you know, 15% or so, uh, 15, 20 random results for 1967, just to see what that community decided. So remember nationwide it was 91%. Uh, and St George was about 80% uh, voted yes. Uh, so that would have been my parents uh, would have been voting there then. Uh, there, there were, there were, there was part. And uh, one of your friends, or your classmate, is Aboriginal, and she come to see me. I have, I'm Chinese. I've got Chinese heritage. Remember, Debbie, so, had, Debbie yeah. and a hall for those from St George. So, so not only that, there is a. This is someone that. Wayne calls the Ballon Beacon <laughs> because she knows everything in, in, in the town. For Auntie Peggy Titerman, she was from the Gungari elders from Mitchell. Mitchell is about 587 kilometres and uh, St George is 509 kilometres. I think from St George to Mitchell is about one hour drive. Yeah. And yeah. she say she have a Chinese blood and she is a First Nation people. I think the grandmother of Auntie Peggy Titerman was born in St George, come from St George. All the good people, it's not just straight out of the United Kingdom. We even accept people from Yugoslavia. That's, <laughs> sorry, my chief of staff is in the front from, uh, from Yugoslavia and Lightning Ridge. So. Granny, you are quite right. We're very inclusive now. I'm say, if you want to be enlisted, you need to be a European look. You can't be enlisted if you don't have the European loan. There are over imagine, 200. Imagine that. Yeah, imagine, imagine that. Checking what you look like. You could go and That's buy right. for your country. But there is people like Billy Sin and Color Shame. Mother is a European and the father is from Shanghai. So mother gives them the white bloodline. So in First World War, you don't have, if I look like me, myself, I will have no chance of enlisted. But the, our country have changed, our defense have changed, uh, they're all very inclusive community now. Even at Sunnybank RSL, we got the Indian Australian War Memorial next to the Chinese War Memorial. And uh, I think that's go for better, isn't it? It it's definitely makes for a much more interesting country. But I've always, well, I um, see a few of my colleagues from previous teaching jobs. I, I was always an English teacher, that was my first job uh, before becoming a lawyer. So I've always loved words and telling stories. I grew up in a family. Um, we, uh, we didn't get a television until I was in grade four, I think. So we, and then it was only the ABC. I just, yeah, it's, we're in West End, so I'll, I can go a cliche, I think, Fiona, that, it, that there are great stories. There are, there are so many great stories. The books I read when I was a kid, uh, you know, were all focused on London. Uh, you know, and daffodils and and, and the like. Um, you know, that telling a, a, a European version of where we were. We should be telling our stories, and Wayne's story is a is a part of that. Graham, your your uh, honesty in saying that um, 
speaking of, uh, and telling fiction is a lot easier as a politician than speaking of fact. Cultural groups have said this takes nothing from us. In fact, it makes us stronger as a nation. It's to see a politician actually interested in a, a moist effort. I've been actually looking at it, and most of them are descendant from that generation that were brought to Moreton Bay in the 1840s and 1850s. So I'm, I'm collecting all of the archival documents on the Amoy Shepherds. Um, I already have hundreds of names. Oh, um, wow. And so we need to Just talk. Just a great dating agency. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what's your name, sir? Jan Richardson. Jan Richardson. The individual stories, like a Wayne Long, yeah, like that will have DNA as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm already in contact and collecting information and I'll be finished in early 2020. But I'm more than happy to speak to anyone who's Ooh, interested. Well done, Jen. Well done. I think you're about to join the Sunnybank speaking circuit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Obviously, a lot of true and correct research has gone into it. When you were speaking with um, Wayne, did you tape all that? And if so, how many hours and, and how much has gone into it as far as research? I mean, look, the yes. Hours and hours of Wayne, and then transcribing it. That's why it took so long, and that's why I hated the process. But I'd start. I was halfway through before I realised, and then I knew I had to get a different version of of this story, both in um, Pine Creek up in the Northern Territory and Darwin on my phone. So many, 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 and and, and my um, home computer. But um. I'm thinking 40 hours, 50 hours, but much. You know, like, so, and the recorder was going, and you, you know, you'd be talking about the footy from the night before, because Wayne was not a, Wayne was living his life, not writing a piece of literature. You know, so we'd talk about all sorts of crap. So, I don't know. How to <laughs> grab a copy now and then we'll have a Wayne at the front um, signing copies. Um, one more round of applause for Wayne. <laughs>